Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. I've been away for a while. I took a much-needed vacation. Now I'm refreshed and ready to get back to work. So tonight we're going to be making fans. And I did a Google search for paper hand fan blanks. And I found all of these different blanks. And I saw a wavy edge, one that I really liked, and that's the one I'm going to use for tonight. So I have a picture that I want to use for this fan. I'm going to make this as a wedding fan. So I'm going to go to my desktop and open up the picture that I want to use. I want to use these roses. And I'm going to start with a blank sheet of paper. I'm going to click. I have everything open on the bottom that I want to use. So whenever you're getting ready to get started on your project, have all of those uh, pictures that you want to use already here in the tray below. And I'm going to drag the one that I want to use. Just click on it from this picture. Well, first of all, you want to click on the picture and it gives you this little thumbnail. And then you click on the portion of the picture that you want to bring up and this is the fan the wavy fan edge so I'm going to just bring it up here and I'm going to drop it in my blank sheet so now I want to resize this so that it's as large as I can get it on an eight and a half by 11 inch sized page. And I'm going to try to center this. It's going to be definitely just by eyeballing it, but that looks pretty good actually. So now I want to bring in my background. And this is the, the background that I want to use. But before I do that, I want to duplicate this shape because I want to also make an inner frame with this same shape. So I'm just going to go right to this picture. This is the picture I'm working on, and here it is in the tray. And I'm just going to click on the picture in the tray and drag it into my fan shape. And I want this to be a little more rectangular with the wavy edge. And I'm going to put my bride and groom's picture in there. So I'm just going to flatten it a little bit. And then we'll do more with that in a minute. So now I'm going to click on the, on the bigger wavy edge fan shape and bring my, flo my floral background into it. So to do that, I'm going to go to Cutout and Picture, Fill Cutout or Picture. I'm, this says Picture. It's a picture of the apple, and now I can drag any picture that I have in the tray up into my fan cover. So I'm going to click on the roses and just bring them up and drop them. And as you can see, it instantly appears there. I can move this around to the portion that I want. I can move it so that, but make sure you still have all of your edges filled in. You could resize this from any corner if you wanted to make the roses bigger. But I like I like uh, this right where it is. So I'm going to go ahead, making sure that all my edges are filled in. There are no white spaces so that my fan, I'll have a complete fan. I'm going to hit done. Now I'm going to come back here to this white shape. And I want to make this into a frame to inset my bride and groom's picture into. So I'm going to go here to paint and color effects and I'm going to choose fill with a gradient and the, in case you don't see this on your screen for some reason when I'm using my wind book sometimes it doesn't show you this secondary menu right here um, if, if you see if it does show in this video then you're going to be choosing fill with gradient if it doesn't show if you're not if you're just seeing me moving my cursor here and there's no box there a no rainbow star right there then on yours when you're working along with me on picture it at your home just listen 
and I will, if you listen, I will tell you which box I'm clicking. So I'm clicking the fill with the gradient, and if you can see it, it's a, it's a rainbow, it's a star shape with rainbow coloring. So I'm going to click that one, and now you do, you will see this because this is the main menu and it will show up. You're going to click on these, it's called Fancy Gradient 4. And it turns that into like a metallic silver, it looks like rods. But I want it to have like the sunburst pattern. So now we're going to click here in style to change the style. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And you'll see me in a lot of projects. I'll use this one a lot because I like the shiny metallic look. So you're going to click here on this third one in the second to the last row. And it's going to give you this starburst or sunburst metallic pattern and we're going to click done now i need one more of this shape because i want to fill this portion in white and that's going to be where i'm going to pull in my picture of the bride and groom and it will already be cropped to the shape just like we did with the outer edge of the, with the outer floral background so i'm going to just go down here once again to the same project I'm working on, but I'm going to pull it from the tray. I'm going to click on it once, and then I'm going to click on the silver frame that we're working on. I can either click and drag this one, or I can click here and drag it from here. I'll click and drag it from here, and I'm going to drop it on the page. And now I'm going to change this one to white. So I'm going to go to Paint and Color Effects fill with a solid color and it will always default to red and then I'm going to choose anywhere on this edge to make it solid white or you could just pull the little ball on the inner where you change the tint pull that little ball all the way to the left side and you will get solid white and I'm going to hit done now I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that I can be more precise with resizing my white box inside of my silver box. I'm going to go in from any corner because I want to keep my proportion correct. And I'm going to just eyeball this inner white frame inside of the silver metallic frame. And that looks pretty good, but I want to make sure, I want to try to make all the edges a, a uniform thickness. So since that's what I'm doing, I can go ahead and go from the top or the bottom because I want to make this edge thickness all the way around. But when you're dealing with pictures of people, you wouldn't want to do that. You would just, um, whenever you're resizing a picture of a person or a character, always do it from one of the corners so that you can keep your proportions correct. But this is how I want this one to look. I wanted that uniform edge all the way around, and that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to cut out this white square because I'm going to pull my couple into it, and it will already have this scallop edge. Or I can cut this white section out and then put my picture behind it and resize it inside of this area. But I'll show you how to pull the picture into the shape again so that you'll become more familiar with how to do that to change shapes to different backgrounds. So I'm going to go to cut out a picture, cut out of picture. I'm going to choose by color selection. And then I'm going to take this all the way down to zero because I just want just the white. If I left this on one or two, it would have pulled out the white and would have also pulled out these light gray areas. But since I just want just this section, I'm going to take it all the way down to zero. And I'm going to click once. And as you can see, it makes that entire white area pink. And I want to keep it there. And I'm going to go ahead and click next. If I didn't want this section, I could click next and choose opposite area. And then this portion would be what I'm cutting away, and this would be a blank section. But I want actually to use this center portion to change it to the picture of the couple, and it will already be cropped exactly as I want it. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hit next year. And it's showing me because you see this isn't in this is in the background and it's it's uh, not sharp. If I wanted to keep that, which is what I was talking about earlier, I would choose select opposite area. But I don't I actually want this cutout piece. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done. It's going to bring that white cutout right here in the top box and I'll have four layers. So now this is the portion that I'm going to change to the bride and groom's picture. So now I'm just going to click anywhere so that I can, why is it doing that? Make sure I have what I wanted. Okay. All right. So I do have a portion that I want. You can see I have just a white section. I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, the back arrow so that it's right where I want it. Okay, so now I'm going to go in because I forgot to pull out my bride and groom. And I'm going to collect a couple to use. So here's a couple I can use. Open that up. And I'm going to go to cut out and picture, cut out of picture because I just want the couple. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And this one I'm going to go ahead and put in its own cutout. So I'm going to put the check mark back in this box. And you'll see it'll put the couple all by themselves in their own picture. So now I'm going to go back to the, pro to the fan project. I'm going to switch back to it. I'm going to click that top box, which is just this inner portion of the frame. I'm going to go to cutout and picture, fill cutout with a picture, click on the apple, and I'm going to drag my couple up. And as you can see, it, it, it supersized their faces, but now I can go in from the corner, keep my proportions, and I'm just going to shrink them down so that they are filling in this entire window. As you can see, I have some white over here, so I'm going to pull from any corner so that I can get rid of all that white and now I just have my couple actually I can just come in a little bit on her side and then make sure that I have all of that white area filled in so that's perfect right there I think looks like I have all the all the white area covered so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and now this portion has automatically been cropped as you can see to that shape. I'm going to hit back arrow so that I can put it back where I had it. Now I'm just going to put down below here I'm going to put we'll call them Jessica and Benjamin. So I'm going to put Jessica and Benjamin and the wedding date or I'll put the wedding of Jessica and Benjamin. So because this background is kind of busy and you might have some backgrounds that are kind of busy but you want your text to stand out. So what I do is I go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape, I change it to white, hit done. I'm going to resize this to a rectangle so that it can be underneath the picture. And you can leave it just like that if you want it to, but I like to still have the background showing through the box. So I'm going to while it's still chosen with all the little quadrant markers around it, I'm going to go to Special Effects, Make Transparent, which is the third one at the in the very top. And then I'm just going to slide this slider over. And as I slide it, you'll see that that's becoming more and more transparent because I want the background to show, but I want my text to pop in by putting this white square, it will make my font and my text pop. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. I brought it up to 29. I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And then I'm going to, I don't like the solid edge. I want it to be softer. So I'm going to, once again, click on that transparent shape. I'm going to go to edge effect. This time I'm going to choose soft edge. And I'm just going to click a few times on the upper arrow. And every time I click, it's going to make that edge 
softer and softer. You can see it a little bit. You can see where the edge is softened inside of the rectangle. So I think that's pretty good. I can make it a little softer. I think I'll make it a little softer. And that makes it kind of melt into the background. So I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And now you can see the full effect of the soft edge. I, it makes it not look so harsh. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on text, add a text box. I'm going to change that. I think I'm going to change it to this dark uh, pink color. So I'm going to click on more color ch choices. I'm going to bring the dropper over in the middle of that dark pink. And then I'm going to click done because I have it the color I want. Now I'm going to pull my cursor right click, I'm sorry, left click and pull the cursor toward the left so that it highlights this and uh, this uh, text and I'm going to type in Jessica and Benjamin. I'm going to bring it down and now you can see how it pops if it was just on that background as you can see you, it blends in a little too much because of the busyness or the, the colors in the background. But by just putting in that transparent rectangle and putting the text on top of that, it looks perfect. And I want to change this to a fancier font. So I'm going to come here where it says click text options. I'm going to click the down arrow. And if you want to get quickly to a font category, I like um, elegant and also, uh, where's that other one? I like to use this elegant font and there's also Edwardian. So if you want to get to the E's quickly, you click on that arrow and then type in the letter E and it will get, it'll take you to the, to close to the E's and then you can scroll down and get to the exact one that you want. So I can use, I think I'm going to go this time with elegance. So I'm going to go ahead and it instantly changed my font here to, to the uh, cursive or the fancy font elegance. And I'm going to move that up a little bit. Click done. Then I'm going to make another text box. And this time this is going to be, it's going to say the wedding of. So I'll keep that in the, I can either keep it in fancy font or I like to mix and match fonts. So I think I'm going to change this one to Times New Roman. So once again, I'm going to click in that box or click on the down arrow. I'm going to hit T and it will take me to the first T font. And I just have to scroll down a little until I get to Times New Roman. I'm going to italicize it since Jessica and Benjamin, the elegance font is also italicized and it makes it look a little fancier. Oops, I don't want to close that out yet, but since I did, all you have to do to get back into it is click on it, left click on it, then right click, choose edit text, and you're back in that text box. So if for some reason you figure, you see that you made a, a typo and need to go back in and correct the text, you just left click the text box, right click the text box, and then choose edit text, and now we're back in where we can change this to the wedding of I'll say the wedding ceremony space down and say of I'm gonna bring this up to the top bring Benjamin and Jessica and oh, I see I made a typo, <laughs> so I typed an O instead of a P instead of an O, so I'm going to left click on it, I'm sorry, right, right click on it, choose edit text, and then I'm going to change that to an O, capital O and a, and a small F. And I can also resize this some so that I can put the date, so I'm just going to resize this a little bit. Trying to keep it even on all sides and try to keep it in the middle. I'm going to move this up a little bit, shrink this down a little bit because I don't want it to dwarf their names. Eyeball the center. 
and then I think I'm going to use this font, the Times New Roman again. And so I don't have to go in the text and all that. I can just right click, click on it, left click on it. I can just left click on it. I can use choose copy, which is right here next to the scissors, paste. And I already have it italicized and everything. So all I have to do now is right click, edit text, and put the date, September 14th. 2019. I put, yeah, that's correct. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And if you wanted to, you could make this font and the text black, or you can make it pink to match. You can make it silver. You can do with it whatever you'd like, whatever uh, looks good to you. So I could leave it like that. I could also Group all of those at the same time. Go to Paint and Color Effects. Click on Red. And instead of that, make it all black. And that looks pretty good. I think I'll, I'll change it to all black. It stands out even more. So now we've finished the cover of our fan. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And next we want to do the inside. The, I'm sorry, the back side of our fan, which will have the program on it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to cut out a picture, cut out a picture with cookie cutter shape. I'm going to go up to the top of our cover of the fan, put it completely around all edges, and then once I have it around all edges, because I'm going to basically make a copy of this and when you do a cut like this it will instantly make another layer and all of this will be one picture and it's usually in JPEG format. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I'm going to take the check mark out because I want it to stay on this page and I'm going to click done because now we're doing the back side of the fan. And we're going to have them both on the same page, which um, makes it a lot easier to keep up with in case you want to go in at a later date and change it to somebody else. You can change everything, the font, the, the background, but you can save this as a wedding fan and then you can use it over and over again. So now you can see I have the cutout here, the new cutout where all of these pieces of the cover are separate, where we can still go in and change them if we want. But now I'm going to change this to a solid white. So I'm going to go to Paint and Color Effect. I'm going to choose Fill with Solid Color. I'm going to make it white by choosing the edge and hit Done. And now this is where you would put the wedding ceremony. So I have the ceremony open down here already, and I'm just going to pull that up, put it in the center, grab it from the edge. And the reason why I do it like this by just cutting out the, the page that we already made or the fan that we already made is because now these are going to be back to back. The cover is going to be backed up to the wedding program and now instead of having to cut all these out separately you'll be able to cut both the back and front cover at the same time so I'm putting the wedding ceremony here or you could put the reception if you made a wedding magazine as your program you could you could make this just for the reception if you want it so I'm just going to center that in the middle of this outline just like that yeah that looks about center and now since I don't want this edge to show because we're just going to be cutting this edge out on the side that has the roses I'm going to make a cut out and picture add a colored shape I'm going to make that shape white it covers up the it becomes the top layer and I'm just going to drag it down one layer so that the text shows and I'm going to 
just pull out the corners so that it covers up that that shadowed edge the, the curvy shadowed edge so now I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this I'm going to save it just as it is as a picture it file first so I'm going to choose save as once it finishes whatever it's doing and I'm going to save it to the desktop so it'll save faster I'm going to say wedding fan and this is the back so I'm going to say wedding fan B and I'm going to add a J for JPEG well actually I want to say so I'm going to say wedding fan And right here it says it's in picture format, and that's the format I want this in because this is going to be my fan master. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. It's going to save it to my desktop. and it's saving it in picture it format. Now this time I'm going to save, but I'm going to change the names a little bit because I'm going to save them as JPEGs. So first, this is the back side. I'm going to, and as you can see right here, it changed the name to Wedding Fan. So now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to click File, Save As. This time, I'm going to change it from picture format to JPEG. And I'm going to change this from Wedding Fan to Wedding Fan B for back. And then I'm going to add a J to show that I'm saving this as a JPEG. And I'm going to click Save. Now, I'm going to choose this ceremony font and text. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click this white background, which is the scalloped edge, but now it's completely white. And I'm going to click that third layer, which is the white square that we put behind the fan and I'm going to group all of those and I'm going to drag them all the way behind the pink layer because now we're going to save our cover but before I save this cover I want to put a shadow a darker shadow around this gray or silver frame the silver metallic frame so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the picture of the bride and groom. I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to click the silver frame. I'm going to scroll down a little so I can see my puzzle piece. I'm going to click the puzzle piece and now I can make that shadow darker by going to special effects, shadow, soft edge and I'm just going to pull out a little bit because I want it to look as if the fan is layered kind of so I'm going to go ahead you saw the how it made that edge you can see the shadow better it makes the picture pop a little bit more and I'm going to click done so we've just finished the wedding fan and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this as the front cover so I'm going to go to file save as going to change this to JPEG. I'm going to put space over and put F for front and a J to show that I saved it as a JPEG. Here's our back that we just saved. Now we're saving the front. And now we're ready to cut it out. Now I'm going to cut this out with scissors because it's too big for the Cricut to cut out because it's a print and cut. And the Cricut only cuts out print and cuts that are 
6.75 inches by 9.25 inches. And as you can see, this is bigger than 6.75 inches. So now we have our back cover and front cover. I'm going to go and print these out. Then we'll be ready to cut it out and make our fan. And I'm going to print two copies of these because I'm going to show you how I uh, make my fans. I like for the front cover to be laminated, but I don't want the back cover laminated. The back cover I leave natural. So, I'm, and I'm using 150 pound cardstock. So that'll be two sheets of 150 pound cardstock that'll be glued together. So now I'm going to go ahead and print out two copies of the front and two copies of the back, and I'll be back. Okay, so now I have my two fan covers, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them back to back, make sure they're stacked exactly on top, all corners matching, and I'm going to place it inside of my laminating pouch. And hopefully you're doing an even number of fans. If not, the odd one out will need to, you'll need to add like just a blank piece of paper or some other uh, paper so that only one side of the cover will be laminated, just the side with the picture of the bride and groom. All right, so now I'm just going to feed this through my laminator, and what I usually do, I'll feed it completely through one side, and then once that side is complete, I'll repeat that, but I'll flip it first, so I run it on each side of the two covers. So once this comes out, I'm going to flip it over and run it through on the back side, which will be the other cover. And that's just to make sure because it's cardstock, sometimes it takes two passes for it to completely adhere to the printout. So now I'm just going to flip it over and run it through again. Okay, now it's all done. I'll go ahead and move this laminator out of the way. And now you want to just cut right at the edge. You're going to cut the, just the clear edge away so that you can separate the two halves. Cut right up along there. The reason why I don't cut the fans out is because I don't want to cut them out until I have the back portion, which is the wedding ceremony page on here as well. So I'm just cutting off those clear edges.
and then now you have two laminated fan fronts. Here's our back. So all we're going to do is flip these over just like that. And we're going to put our back side on. And to I tried different ways of, of putting the, the backs on to the front cover. I tried the hot glue gun, but that left like raised patterns and I want my fan completely smooth. So instead of doing that, I now use a glue stick. So remember you still have to put your you still have to put your fan stick in. So what you're going to do is you're just going to glue the outer edges of the fan. So I'm going to turn it over so that you can see we need to put glue just on the outer edges and around the top. So I'm going to run my glue along this edge in the top, leaving the center open and we'll put our our glue stick in, we'll put our, our stick for the fan in by adding more glue. And I'm just going to come down this side, make sure that you're not closing up your opening for your stick. Put more along this top edge to make sure that it's completely adhered. And you're just going to press it down. And I usually turn it over as well when it because it starts to curl a little. So I turn it over and I do it like this as well. So now we have the front and the back on our fan. And I'm going to cut just around the shadowed edge here. You can see that I'm just going to cut around the shadowed edge and that will give me my program on the back and the front. So I'm going to cut that out and I'll be back. Now it's all cut out. There's the front of the fan and the back of the fan and all we have left to do is add the stick. Okay, now we have it all cut out. Make sure that you glue around these edges really well and leave a little opening at the bottom for your stick. And we're going to put the stick in using hot glue because that area will be raised anyway, but you won't have all those little lines going through it if you like it would if you just use hot glue. So we're just use I just used a plain glue stick and now we're ready to put in our stick. And I get these sticks from Walmart, they cost under $3 for $24, and they're just called wavy sticks. They have some that look like tongue depressors, and don't make a mistake and get those because those are too thin, and they will not work as a fan. It will break really easily. I made that mistake, and I had to take those back and get these. So I'm going to take my wavy stick, and I'm going to just insert it in that opening that I left at the bottom. I'm going to see about where I want to position it. And I'm just going to open the space a little bit so that I can stick my finger in there. And I'm going to put hot glue on the top and underneath. And I'm going to position my handle right where I want it. Make sure it's straight, and I'm just going to smash it down on both sides. I put glue on the front and the back of the stick. Still have a few seconds to straighten it out. And now I'm going to add one more glue stick to my glue gun and close the opening at the bottom of the fan on each side. So now my stick is in there very well, and I'm just going to put a little glue on this side, and a little glue 
on this side to finish sealing off the bottom of the fan. So just press it down a little bit to make sure it hears, pull off any extra strings for neatness sake. And we have a fan. So remember to make sure you get all around that edge so that your fan won't be coming apart on the edges. And you have a nice option to use as a wedding program. Or you can make these for graduations. You can make them for church. I made some for church, so quite a few actually. And it's just as easy as that. Once again, you've been watching Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. If you haven't already subs subscribed, please subscribe and don't forget to hit the like button. And feel free to share these with any and everybody. And if you would like the software that I use to design almost all of my designs, um, it's called Picture It 2000. I have the software available for instant download for any of my subscribers who want to download it to use to follow along with the tutorials. And you would just need to contact me on Facebook at Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus or Harriet Homes and let me know that you're interested in getting the software and I will send you the link to download the zip file and you'll be designing in no time. Thank you for watching and once again this has been Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus and our project for tonight is a fan or a wedding program fan.